Hi guys, Knife Detector here. So I wanted to do this video mainly because it's been a year since my daughter got me this bad boy as a gift. And you guys will remember that I did a video on the Kilimanjaro Magnus, right? This is a very hefty multi-tool. And I got a, some feedback from some of my viewers, uh, some positive feedback saying they were going to try this out. And some of them saying that they do like it. And I wanted to share my one-year review with this bad boy with you. And I wanted to give you my one-year impressions for this multi-tool. Uh, there are some good and there are some bad. The good, this was a gift for my daughter. So because this was a gift for my daughter, I will cherish it and I will use it and I will enjoy it very much. And let me tell you, my overall rating for this bad boy, for this multi-tool, is about... A B plus, and I'm going to tell you why it's not an A in a little bit. But first, the positives. Positives on this multi-tool are as follows that I have discovered for this year. Let's start with that, those pliers, right? You got this nice rubber, comfortable, ergonomic grip for these pliers. Fold out like so. And uh, these are heavy-duty pliers, guys. Um, very heavy-duty. And squeezing uh, these pliers and using that comfortable grip... Um, it's easy. It's almost effortless when you want to cut something like wire. Uh, what I did recently is I had to help uh, my daughter with a science project, and we use wire coat hangers to make a DNA model. Well, guess what I did? I used the wire cutters here to cut those coat hangers, and you know what? Uh, those wire cutters, they just uh, made short work of those wire hangers. It was ridiculous. It just sliced through that wire like it was nothing, pretty much. I also like these teeth here. Uh, because if you're in a pinch and you have a possibly a bolt that has been rounded off, these teeth are really good here as well. So these pliers are actually uh, very good. I'm happy with those pliers. And more than anything, I really like that rubber handle. So that's a plus on the plus side for the Kilimanjaro. Okay, let's see what else I want to show you. We're going to close off the pliers on this. And we're going to come up with uh, the blade here. This blade is pretty darn big, okay? Uh, the blade on this thing is beefy, and it is a little dirty because I have used it. I've used it for some gardening stuff to cut some uh, some aloe. I've used it to cut some uh, cactus. I've used it for a little bit of gardening, nothing major, some uh, utility work, cardboard boxes, uh, so forth. And I have to tell you, um, this knife has worked very well. Um, I haven't put so much work into it that I need to sharpen it for anything, but so far as I can tell, it has retained the edge fairly well. Um, I do like the shape of that blade very much as well. Um, I don't have anything negative to say about it except maybe this. Check this out. Let's say you're going to use the pliers. You do not want to have the pliers and this blade open at the same time. Um, that could give you some issues. But that goes without saying with any multi-tool, right? You don't want to accidentally stab yourself with this knife and these pliers. That goes uh, without saying with any multi-tool. If you're going to use one blade, you're going to close the other one. That's just the way it works. It's always been that way. So I don't really count that as a drawback on this knife, right? So let's close that up right there. Okay. Interesting. The other thing that is interesting is that you don't press this in to close it. You pull it in. You pull it in. So it's actually a left hand closing. It's kind of like you have to do it like this to close it or you pull it in with your right hand. It's kind of interesting the way that is. Yeah. Let me show you that again. To close this, you don't press this down. You actually have to pull this up and then you can close it, which to me... Here's a lever right here. You have to push this in with your left. So to me, that's like you can't do it quickly. You really have to concentrate so that you don't accidentally uh, cut yourself while you're doing that. So that is one of the drawbacks. Um, that That's a little bit interesting the way that works. But you should always be mindful when you're using cutlery or multi-tools, right? So let me close those up, and I'm going to show you some of the other features. check this out. This saw is a little bit of a monster. Um, 
it's a little bit of a beast. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, this past Thanksgiving, I cooked a delicious honey-baked ham uh, following one of the recipes I found on YouTube. And I cooked it in a crock pot to start and then I ended up finishing up in the oven to get it all nice and golden. Added some brown sugar and honey, some cloves, a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of apple juice. It was beautiful. Anyway, it was delicious, guys, and I'm just getting hungry thinking about it. But it didn't fit in the crock pot. It didn't fit in the crock pot. So part of that ham hock in the end, part of that ham bone was sticking out and it did not want to close the crock pot. And you guys can't, you know, you can't cook in a crock pot if the lid isn't closed. So guess what I thought to myself? I said, self, this would be a good test for the saw on this Kilimanjaro Magnus, right? So I took this saw and I started cutting that ham bone. I started cutting that ham bone, uh, sawing right through it. And guys, let me tell you, that ham bone where I was cutting it was probably about the width of a 50 cent piece. And um, this bad boy cut right through it in about a minute. Is that a little bit of ham still on there? Oh my gosh. After all this time, I thought I had cleaned it. Check that out. That's a little bit of marrow still in there. <laughs> Looks like I need to do a better job of cleaning, boys. Anyway, this sucker's sharp, guys. Uh, it got the job done really well. I was very impressed with that saw. I've also used it to trim branches, um, but it cut through that ham bone really nicely. That's a definite plus. The saw on this thing is a little bit of a monster. Uh, really like it. I'm going to close that up. You press it in like so. You can do it one-handed if you like. Those are the things I really like about this multi-tool, but uh, let me tell you a couple of things I'm not too crazy about. Let's see. You know, before I had mentioned how, you know, you had the Phillips, right? You pull it out using this as kind of like a nail nick to pull it out. I mean, it's an okay Phillips. The only thing is that uh, it's really weird when you're holding it like this and then you're trying to twist it. It's just not natural because it's not in a straight line. So you kind of have to hold it at a bit of an angle to get it done. So it's definitely a situation where when you're using the Phillips on this, you know that this is not your primary tool. Um, this is not something that you're going to use all the time because it's just not comfortable. It's not realistic, right? Same thing goes, and that's just a friction, so we can close it like that. Same thing goes for the two point and the cap opener right there. It's just not comfortable. You have to hold it like this for it to be straight. Kind of like, a, what is that? Not a 90 degree angle, maybe an 80 degree, something like that. It's kind of weird. So those are the two true drawbacks I have on it. So because of that, you know, after one year with the Kilimanjaro Magnus, oh, I would say that I'm going to give this uh, probably... If I were to grade this on a scale and I'm doing a review on this and this is a one year review, then we would be talking about a B plus. This bad boy would probably get an 88 for me only because of those two things I mentioned or those three things I mentioned. It's good to have, like I said, with this color that it has, uh, you can't lose it. You drop it out there, you're doing yard work, you can't use it. This would be a fantastic companion to take with you camping. Although weight, if weight is an issue, you may want to take some other tools instead because this is kind of heavy. So if weight is an issue, you may want to forego taking this on a camping trip. But if you do take it, man, think of all the tools. You got a knife, you got a saw, you got a pliers, you got Phillips, you got a flathead, you know, you got a... Uh, a file, you know, if you do take it, uh, you probably will use it only because it's such a utility tool that, that's right there to have. Uh, like I said, it does come with this nylon pouch that I'm not a huge fan of, but come on, it says Kilimanjaro right there. That's kind of cool, right? So in any case, this is my one year review of this multi-tool and it was last year's Christmas gift for my daughter. Guys, wait till I show you what she got me this year. I'm going to give you two clues. The first clue is that it's big and the second clue is that it is sharp. And that is the only two clues I'm going to give you. So until then, this is a knife detector saying thank you for subscribing to all of my current loyal subscribers and my new subscribers. Take care. God bless. I hope you guys are going to have a wonderful, wonderful year ahead.